Under no circumstance should you take what I say as medical advice. Anything I say or do on here is purely for information and entertainment. Mitch here for the Concussion Channel. And today's topic is, it's not going to be about second impact syndrome like I said in my last video, but instead on wearable devices to detect impacts and remove players from play. There are three categories that a device can go into. The first uh, are outside of the helmet, the second is mouth guard, and the third is actually on your head. So first these devices that go on your helmet, they're plentiful and they're everywhere, um, but I'm going to focus on four, four of them. Uh, First is called a shock box, second is a uh, G-Force tracker, and then third is brain sentry, and then safe brain. Um, all these devices have uh, one thing in common, that they all have a flashing LED light when they detect an impact above a certain threshold. And so what this can encourage is uh, for opposing players to hit the player wearing the device to hit them harder. Now, in my opinion, a better way to manage this would be to have uh, an app and have the medical team receive an alert from the device and then it will uh, enable the medical team to take the player out of play and then assess them if they actually have a concussion. Mouth guards have a distinct advantage over uh, external helmet sensors because they're actually in your mouth and they have a little bit more accuracy so they know how your head moves and there are two uh, two of them that I know about one is FitGuard uh, the other is I1 biometrics um, FitGuard has a little bit of a disadvantage over I1 because uh, the front it has a LED strip which will glow uh, green red or and I think yellow um, red obviously to take someone out of play and this would I think actually encourage players not to wear it because um, it'll alert officials to to take them out of a game. And in Ohio, there's a there's a law there's a regulation or a rule in football where if the official takes uh, the pl the football player out uh, because of a suspected concussion, concussion, they can't come back unless they have a signed note by a doctor. Um, I1 doesn't have this problem because uh, it transmits, transmits its data to uh, a mobile device or a laptop, uh, but both devices can be useful. On the head sensors, um, they're actually on a person's head, and uh, I think that this is actually the, the best type of sensors. There are three of them that I know of. Uh, one is Rebox Check Light. Another is uh, X2 Bio, their X Patch, and then uh, an Australian or New Zealand company, excuse me, uh, CSX. CSX is Sensor Cell. And so, first the check light. Um, the check light is like a skull cap that you put on, um, and this too has the disadvantage of the external sensor and the fit guard, where it has the LED light, but it's in the back. And um, it'll light up yellow or red if if it's past a certain G-force threshold. Um, and so another disadvantage that this could have is that it could like slip and slide around uh, someone who might not have any hair. Um, although I haven't really gotten into the details of the actual skull cap. Um, and the X the X patch and the CSX sensor cell um have this advantage over uh the other two types uh because they actually go right behind your ear and um they're attached to your head and they know how your head's moving and um you know it it they both of them also relay the information to a to a app on a mobile device now, while I've criticized most of these devices, uh, they all can help in combating uh, the occurrence of a undiagnosed concussion. Um, and hopefully within the next five years, uh, these devices will become the norm.
in uh, in sports and in high school and in college. Um, this is a good thing because the more information athletic trainers and the medical staff has, uh, the easier it is to help players get back to playing. Um, that's all I have. Uh, remember, it's better to sit out a game than sit out the rest of your life. See ya.